LA United Fan TV here with Mark, here with Tanner, and the news has come out that FDB, Frank De Boer, and Atlanta United have mutually parted ways. It's uh, maybe a bit crazy on the timing in terms of uh, the reactions from most of the fans, but uh, I think, you know, there are, uh, it's a pretty loud crowd of FDB out as well. So, uh, yeah, guys, what are your thoughts? Tanner, we'll go with you first. Oh, I mean, I think I, I'm not shocked necessarily that the move happened. I'm kind of more surprised at the timing of it. Um, I didn't think that the team was acceptable in terms of the standards they played at, at the MLS's back tournament and players like Brad Guzan let that be known afterwards, which was kind of surprising to me. So I guess in that context, context, the timing isn't surprising, but I had said on the podcast before, I thought he'd get the rest of whatever this season is just to get a chance. But clearly there must've been some larger issues at play here, whether that was between him and the players or him in the front office in terms of the style of play. Um, regardless, the decision was, was, was reached and, you know, it's a mutual parting of ways. And maybe that's because DeBoer realized that maybe that he wasn't going to be successful here and it gives him a better chance to get a job in Europe. Or maybe the club was like, hey, this is the easier way for us to do this, to say this, to be less dickish. But, you know, a decision was made and, and now Lenny Nett has a very uncertain future. Indeed, indeed. Mark, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I think in terms of, you know, even expecting the club to make a move like that, it's really difficult to as to what you would have expected the club to do because we're so young, right? Like, uh, you know, you think of like European clubs and you kind of, you know how they're going to operate. And so uh, I also thought that, yeah, the board would probably just get more time. That's typically the safer move. Um, but obviously at Lane and I felt differently. I will say about the timing, uh, it does make sense in the sense that the European leagues are wrapping up. And so in theory, uh, Atlanta United now has a bigger pool to choose from. But um, in terms of, you know, like the pressure, uh, it's still there. I just think now it's with Boca Negro. Right, definitely. Yeah, I think the uh, the pressure definitely, as you're, you're, I think you're right, does shift uh, over to the front office now because, and also the players, I think, uh, yeah, the players that they've brought in, uh, that onus on them to perform and them to develop, if they're a younger player or a prospect, uh, definitely uh, gets heightened now. But uh, I think you made a great point as well that, you know, not only Europe, but around the world, uh, you know, most of the leagues are ending or have ended. And that really, I think, you know, allows a larger pool of candidates to be interviewed. But, uh, you know, I pose the question to you uh, guys for this is, you know, because we are, yes, in a pandemic, it could be theoretically harder for, uh, you know, the front office to be able to interview the, uh, the candidates to be able to maybe convince guys that are maybe on the fence a little bit, uh, you know, maybe be able to take them to see the Mercedes-Benz Stadium or, uh, you know, the training grounds. It might just have to be a, a bomb video package that, you know, they have to show them instead. But, uh, you know, what, what are you guys' thoughts on, you know, the maybe difficulty uh, in this time of, um, you know, finding the right candidate? Tanner. I mean, I think that it's it's a very difficult situation, like you say. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to get managers to come over from Europe, and no one from over here is going to be able to go over there because of travel restrictions right now. So unfortunately, what's probably going to happen is Atlanta is going to be left with whoever doesn't have a chair out of the European coaching carousel. So whoever doesn't have a chair after everyone gets hired going into this new season, um, that's who you're going to be able to pick from unless they already have previous knowledge of your facilities and everything that's here and, and they're convinced enough to come and take this project. But, I mean, let's not pretend that Atlanta United is on par with any project in Europe right now. I mean, most of them would rather take an opportunity that's decent in Europe. I'm sure looking at the bigger name managers over there or trying to get a job there um, as opposed to taking the step to MLS. It's a very complex, complicated league, and it's a lot more difficult to get what you want and mold things the way you want um, in a league like MLS. Right. Mark, uh, I mean, is it something that's uh, a hindrance to you, you think? Um, you know, as as we're doing this now, I'm thinking I'm wondering if the yeah, you know, if they've already had people in mind that they want to interview, if they've already even possibly spoken to some people, you know, because uh, it would be, uh, I think, a bit rash to, you know, go ahead and make this move and then not have a next step in place. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there will, be, there will be hindrances. I think some of that, uh, they can work around, you know, via the internet and so on. Um, in terms of who can actually travel to the U S that's, you know, I guess we'll just have to see. Um, 
perhaps they're banking on things improving uh here in the next couple of months but you know um yeah there will be some natural hindrances but i would i think that i would hope anyway that la united has a plan uh for the next month or two right so uh ultimately i think the question is was this the right time for you know fdb and la united to mutually part ways uh you know given what's happening pandemic uh given mls back results and performance uh given you know kind of the roster turnover and joseph being injured those are all factors but at the end of the day it seemed like yeah you know it was untenable to a degree that yeah they had to uh make the decision now so uh tanner what do you think this was the right time I mean, I think the more we sit here and talk about it, the more we look at the timing and how it's happened when you take into context everything else in terms of like the external factors and other leagues and stuff, I think it does make sense. Um, the rest of the season is going to be a write-off, and you have to think that you, know, you saw the images of, of Carlos, Carlos Bocanegra being you know, on the bench having a rather, you know, I wouldn't, uh, how can I describe it? You know, a very interesting chat with interesting Jeff Interesting chat. Lewis. Yeah, animated. Yeah. There was a very interesting chat going on. You don't usually see that. And it was after a period in play where Atlanta were, 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 were cut open. And, you know, there was clearly some confusion there and some some sort of, you know, unhappiness. And then this this decision takes place. I mean, I think, you know, the players already didn't really enjoy him. I think we knew that from last season. Um, and clearly there's been a, a more frayed relationship there and it's gotten worse. Um, especially when you have someone like Brad Guzan coming out and saying things that he said after the match against Columbus. Those are some very strong words. And I think the club probably looked at that and said, okay, if this guy's coming out and supporting, you know, and not supporting, but, you know, has issues, there's clearly a problem. And they probably looked at it and go, all right, this here's a write off. It doesn't matter. There's no use in keeping him around. And if he kind of feels the same thing, because let's be honest, he can't be stupid. He had to probably see the writing on the wall a little bit saying, this, I probably can't get this to be what I want it to be at this point. And it's not shocking because it clearly wasn't working and the ideas weren't being taken on. So maybe he sees it as a good opportunity for himself to have another chance, you know, back in Europe probably because he can actually go back. Um, and, you know, maybe that's an opportunity for him. Yeah. Mark, is it the right time? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I may be biased on this, but I have always preferred when a team uh, lets go of a coach sooner than later. You know, it's, all, it's, it's difficult to nail it, you know, nail the timing. But uh, I just think if you really don't believe in this, uh, this person you've appointed, uh, you know, if you have serious doubts, then just go ahead and let him go. Go ahead and uh, start looking for the person you think is the right person. Um, you know, now also, I, I suspect, I've said this before, I suspect that the coaching search was rushed to begin with. I think they wanted, I think they would have much rather just kept Tata for another year. Um, and something I think about a lot is the fact that Tata contacted Atlanta United first. And so, you know, like now, you know, I think uh, specifically Bocanegra and Eels have bought themselves a little more time to do like a real proper coaching search, but uh, they need to demonstrate that they can actually do it. So it's yeah. going to be challenging. Like we have to make that very clear. Like yeah. people need to understand that yes, Atlanta is a big club in MLS. It is a club that's growing on the world stage in terms of its you know level and how it's perceived. But it's not there yet. We're not at the same level as European jobs, even if it's in the Netherlands. Like, if someone has a chance at a good club in the Netherlands, it's better for them to go there than come to Atlanta United. And like I said earlier, there's so many challenges that MLS presents because of its roster building rules that make it a lot harder for you to go and get something and build a complex style. And I think that's something that Atlanta maybe possibly learned here. Maybe that was a bit of hubris on our part to think that we could assemble a squad that could play this way. But I think it's not really possible to do that in MLS yet. Maybe it will get there, but right now it's difficult. So, you know, you're going to have to convince somebody if you want a really big name to come here. So fans might be a bit surprised by who the next manager is, but the front office is going to have to get the decision right because, like you guys have said, you know, there is a bit of an eye on them now in terms of the players they brought in and the managerial decision they made. So, you know, I wish them the best and I support them fully and I hope they get the right decision and I'm excited to see what decision they go in and what direction they go in. And honestly, it can't be more boring than shit we've watched for the last 18 yeah. months. Yeah. yeah, I think it's uh, it's very telling also, though, uh, to add on to what you guys are saying, uh, that, you know, when Eric Lopez was being talked about, FTB had nothing, you know, to say about it. He didn't know about it, apparently, is what he said to the media. 
Uh, and, you know, maybe there is truth to that. Maybe they were making these moves and then all of a sudden, you know, they let them know that, hey, yeah, we're bringing in these players. Uh, so maybe there have been some things brewing, you know, behind the scenes for a while. And, uh, you know, it, it could just be coming to a head because of the performance and the results at the MLS's back tournament. So, uh, yeah, very, very interesting days ahead indeed for LA United and LA United fans. So, guys, do you have any final thoughts on, uh, you know, Frank DeBoer and, you know, his tenure here? Uh, I mean, I guess I may as well say, like, Smug kind of called it in February. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the future. I said at the very beginning when we hired him, this man is like Louis Van Gaal. It's going to be boring. I said what was going to happen in like the first podcast. I told you what I was afraid of. It happened. Like I said, I'm on Python. I told you. I told you. But did you listen? No. Now I've told you. Look where we are. But there are uh, still some of the... Uh... Don't hire Louis Van Gaal disciples. <laughs> don't do it. It's going to be boring. It sucked. You know, Jose Mourinho. You know what? Yeah, there are some... We uh, need Bielsa uh, disciple. Yeah, yeah, Bielsa disciples or, you know, uh, even Tata Martino disciples, sure. But Can Bielsa just be like, nah, I don't fancy the Premier League. It's too much. Comes to Emma. <laughs> it would be quite hilarious, but yeah. He's no. so crazy. I can see it. Ha it will not happen. We make this very no. clear. Will not happen. But, but that's, that's the type of crazy him, that he is I'd, crazy. Be, I'd get down behind. But uh, it's, it's one of those things where... Yeah, the Frank de Boer in crowd uh, still definitely thinks that, uh, you know, he was let go too early. The kind of, you know, prioritizing of results uh, versus, you know, the actual, um, you know, attacking style and performances is something that, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be very divisive uh, amongst the fan base for a while, I uh, prognosticate. But, Mark, final thoughts? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, respect to Frank DeBoer for uh, Open Cup and I guess Campione's Cup. Um, you know, like, I, you know, he, he got the job done in that regard. But you, you look at how MLS is moving as a league and like the top teams and like the most, uh, I guess, not, not necessarily the favorite teams, but certainly like the teams I think who are moving the league in a new direction like LESC, they have a certain, you know, playing style. Like, it's not just about the results. They actually entertain as well. It's not just them either. You could point NYCFC, you could point, you could point to Sporting KC. And these teams are also, like, starting to make bigger transfers. So I think that... Columbus. Atlanta, Columbus. Oh, yeah, great example. So, like, you know, if Atlanta and I wants to stay on top or ahead of the game or with those teams, I think that it's a move that they needed to do at this time yeah well said guys uh yeah i mean i, I want to thank frank DeBoer for his time at the club uh for leading us to the u.s open cup and to the campionas cup wins i mean definitely it has upped the cachet of atlanta united and atlanta on a whole so that's still uh you know positives from his tenure here uh however any of us felt about uh frank DeBoer as a uh, head coach i don't think it reflects on him as a person i mean he's been i think top for you know uh a top class guy for uh you know his entire time here so um you know i think largely it's uh something that's maybe bittersweet for some uh maybe vindication for others but uh yeah frank de boer is out so for mark for tanner i'm aj Thanks so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are on Frank DeBoer leaving Atlanta United. But yeah, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.